Hi there, it's Carol with Carol B. Crafts. Today is um, project number five in my um, Spooky Cat online class. Um, you can take this class, you can get the materials for this class absolutely free uh, when you make a $60 retail purchase using the host code on my blog, uh, www.carolbcrafts.com. Now this is uh, taken from the Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog. So this is not my original idea, um, but it's so cute. And so that's why my class is kind of spooky cat copycat, um, because I had copied most of the things in it I copied from the Stampin' Up! Catalog. And a lot of times, if you're like me, you look at the catalog and you say, oh, that's really cute. How did they do that? How did they make that? So, um, so I thought this would be fun to make some of their projects and you can watch and learn and then you can have the materials to make them yourself just by making that $60 purchase. Now the stem set that you'll need is the Spooky Cat Halloween. Uh, you don't need the punch but it comes as a bundle with the Spooky Cat punch which is really cute and um, I think it's very reasonably priced. So this might be something you want to pick up, if even if you're not doing my class, uh, pick this up, um, make your order $60 uh, in retail, use my host code, and you can get um, all of the materials you need to make the 10 projects, 5 designs, um, in the Spooky Cat Copycat Online class. So these are some really cute pizza boxes, the mini pizza boxes. And you can see there's Andy Mints inside there. And then inside this one is um, some York Peppermint Patties. Now, who wouldn't love getting something like that to, to put at their desk at work or their craft desk and to give their husband for trick-or-treating, um, taking the kids around trick-or-treating, a little special treat for them. So um, let's get started making our boxes. Okay, we're going to use this um, packet for our pizza boxes. This is going to be so fun. And everything is here pre-cut for you, so no worries. Um, let's see, so I have these two pieces here. They go with these. We have our two little pieces of antique lace. Um, I believe that's called antique lace. Um, vintage crochet trim. That's what that's called. And then we've got a little piece for our trick-or-treat. These two I cut from DSP, from the Spooky Cat DSP. And then we're going to cut out hats from here for our owls. And then this is for... Okay, yeah, that's for stamping. So stamping, stamping, stamping. Everything else we can put aside for now. And these are photopolymer stamps, so we're going to use our pad, our pierce mat. The first thing we want to stamp, let's stamp with our basic black, basic black ink. Let me move some of this away so I can get in the center here. Okay, everything's wanting to fall apart. Okay, so we're going to get our basic black ink. And the first stamp that we're going to use from our Spooky Cat is this A Wicked Yummy Treat for You. And we're just going to need the spider webs. We need two of to stamp that twice on this piece of paper, which is Whisper White. And it is eight and a half by two. So we'll just stamp this so we can get our spider webs. And there's room for you to stamp an extra one just in case you need an extra one. Okay, so we're done with that. The next thing we want to stamp with our basic black is 
the trick or treat and I have a, pay, a piece of pumpkin pie and it is 11 by half an inch and we need two stamped of the trick or treat from the spooky cat stamp set we just want to center it now we're going to make like a little banner so we don't want to put them too close together or too close to the end we only need two but as usual I give you a little extra just in case stamp that one kind of in the middle and just for good luck I'll stamp one here in case we need it all right so that's our trick-or-treat now we're going to do the owls and the owls are going to go on these little squares that I cut from a DSP the owls are going to be in smoky slate so I'll get my smoky slate out Now, as sometimes happens when you don't use your ink a lot for a while, um, it gets kind of all to the top, and so we're going to push some of it to the sides because this is a relatively solid stamp, and solid stamps have to have a nice, smooth, no bubbles, no uh, blotchy. We don't want any blotchy, so I'm moving all of that ink to the side. You can see where it's lighter here in the middle. That's because I moved the ink. This is just an old bone folder that I saved just for that purpose. Okay, now I believe I can get a good image with my owl. And I want it to set on the tree and I can see <laughs> the limbs are going upward towards the sky. That is not how trees... Well, I guess trees could grow like that, but that's not what was intended so I'm going to put it so he's sitting on this tree I'm just gonna slide my stamp of majig in there just in case I don't get a dark enough image but I'm happy with that it's not real real dark but it doesn't have to be okay I'll ink it up again I'm putting his little uh, feet above the branch so that it looks like he's or she is sitting on the branch. Okay, so we got our owls. We're done with our smoky slate. Now we're going to bring in some pumpkin pie. Find our pumpkin pie right here. And we're just going to do the little feet and the beak. Now, I could do that just by looking, but I love my stamp on a jig because it you really can get things perfect. So, I'm going to bring in my stamp on a jig and stamp that image of the feet and the beak right there. Then I'm going to bring my paper in here line that up feet and beak there it's a little bit there that looks good now I'm going to bring in my feet and beak again and I'm just going to go down lightly and up and now it has its feet and beak and I won't have to do that again because I can use the same image on the next owl there's the beak and the feet okay there's our owl. We're done with our pumpkin pie. Okay, so in the Stampin' Up 
Uh, I think they didn't use the stamp for this. I think they must have just put some black dots. So I'm going to use my Stampin' Write marker for the eyes. I'm just going to color those in there. But you can use any black marker that you have. Okay, so now we need to. Um, I have my. I have one box put together, so we're going to go ahead and decorate that box. And I didn't have enough paper to do exactly what they did in the Stampin' Up catalog, so I kind of made a a substitute. So we will use some DSP. Uh, this this color DSP is 12 by one and a half, 12 by one and a half, both these strips are. And the cardstock, pumpkin pie in basic black, is 12 by two. And this is going to be like a band that we're going to make for our box. Now, you can do orange on black, like that, and black on orange, or you can do orange um, pumpkin pie on pumpkin pie and basic black on basic black. It's your preference. I think I'm going to do basic black on basic black. So what we want to do is we'll put, first of all, that I've got some mints in here. So I'm going to put it half an inch, this is the bottom now, half an inch from the bottom. And I'm going to just fold it around. I mean half an inch from the edge on the bottom. <laughs> Sorry, it's uh, been a long day. All right, and then I'm just gonna fold this around and kind of try to burnish those edges with my fingers. We want it tight, but not so tight that, you know, that you can't get it off. And so now I'm going to add, now you might say, well, why didn't you add that before? It's because um, this has, this is more flexible than the cardstock, so I didn't want any puckering. So I'm going to go ahead and add this now that I've folded the cardstock and got it where I want it. And I could probably get rid of this. That would help. Okay. Now I'm going to put my adhesive on here along the edge, all the way along both edges. Get in the camera there. All the way along both edges and then this way and on the ends. So, oops, that's not good. Okay, so I'm going to put this even here in the center. So we want even spacing on both sides. And then we're going to bring this around And now that we've got that there, we'll put some snail here. And it doesn't hurt to have a little extra. And then I'm going to put some, well, I already have snail there, so that's good. Okay, so now I'm just going to line it up so that it's lined up. Tight, but not so tight that it doesn't slide off. It's like a little belly band for your, so that it doesn't pop open and your candy go everywhere. So um, next we're going to put on this. But before we put on that, we have to cut out our 
spider. We need four of these spider things. So we'll use our snips. And like I said, we just need the spider, but you know, I'm going, the spider webs, I'm going to cut like this. And I'll do one on camera. I'm leaving just a little bit of an edge around the spider a web. Now I'm just going to cut it in half. And the reason I'm doing that, I only need the spider web, but I need something to adhere it to my the back of my my design here. So I'll put some snail there and make sure that's that's right. We're just gonna put it right there. And we'll do some on the other side down here. Okay, that's just a subtle little decoration, but it adds so much. And we're going to put that there. Now, I'm, I'm actually going to use some Fast Fuse because I think Fast Fuse is going to hold it better for me. And I'm going to put it here in the center. I don't want to go too far over the edge because I want to make sure that the, it doesn't go past where my thing is going to go. That fast fuse will hold it a lot better than the snail will. But if you don't have it, then, you know, use the snail. Use what you have. Okay, there we go. Now we've got just a few more things to do. We have um, our trick-or-treat banner. And they basically just have it squared. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use my trimmer, my Stampin' Trimmer, because I want a nice straight edge. And I want it to be just a little bit past, whoops, that's in the way. It's a little bit past the, the T's. I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, there's my trick or treat. And that's supposed to go right about there. But before we put that on, <laughs> I'm always saying that, but before we do that, we have to add our vintage crochet trim underneath the um, So we'll put some snail right there by the edge, got a little bit over, and we just want a tiny bit Okay, so here we have our hat. I had to stop my camera for a minute because it likes to, it only goes for 20 minutes and then it stops. We are ready for us to put our hat on and I think I'll use, I think I'll just put a little bit of snail on the back. That'd be the easiest. that on top of his head or her head. Try not to make it over the edge of the box. It's a little bit over the edge. Okay, so that's 
that's one of the boxes and I'll show you what's inside here is the uh, Andy's mints and I bought one of those containers about like this of the Andy's mints and I was able to fit all of them inside so that's going to be a nice treat for someone especially if they like Andy's mints it was about two dollars for all of those mints but you know, if you're going to go to the trouble to make something special for someone, you don't want to go cheap on the, the candy. Because then it's like, why bother if you get cheap candy to go inside? Okay, so that's closed. We'll put the, this back on. That helps keep it shut so if, it, if they drop it, it doesn't go everywhere. Now, to put this box together, there's a waxy side on the inside and a paper side on the outside. The waxy side is for um, if you want to make a cookie or anything like that. Um, it's not, the grease isn't going to go through the... The, the paper so I'm just folding everything that folds right now we didn't put one together at the beginning but we're putting one together at the end which makes no sense but oh well so this these two little things go in the holes right here oh, they're like little slits and then these two things go in the slits too. So you can see that's where the slits go. And then this just folds over like that. Now this is also, um, the other idea that I had for this was to get some peppermint patties to go in there. I think peppermint patties, there's two of them. They're a perfect fit. Some of the ice breakers, ice, ice breakers gum, the round things would probably fit in there. I'm not a big fan of that gum, so I didn't buy any. I am a big fan of York peppermint patties. So I bought some of those. Okay, so we finished our boxes. And thanks for joining me. If you'd like to take my class, check out my blog, www.carolbcrafts.com. And this class is good till uh, October 13th. So thanks for watching. Bye now.